everyone. I'm standing in front of this painting that has a lot of turquoise in it and uh, in the last video I showed you how I added a lot of shapes into this painting that sat around my studio for a long time. Most of that time I wasn't even looking at it because it was stored away but when I moved to my new studio, uh, just to refresh your memory, I brought it out because it always intrigued me and I wanted to finish it so now is the time to finish it. So what I've done is I've added a lot of shapes uh, which I showed you in the last video. They are like this shape here and this shape, this shape, and this shape. So what I've done, I'll show you a black and white. You know how I love to convert paintings into black and white and I encourage all of you to do the same because we see value before color. So in order for me to continue to work on this painting, it's really important for me to see how the values are doing. What I noticed is that it's predominantly mid-tone, secondary darks, and just a little bit of light. The other thing that I have to really remind myself, a uh, good time to remind myself is, what is this painting about? And as I looked at it, you know, just before doing this video, I definitely love color. Like color should be pretty obvious that uh, when you combine turquoise and red and green and, you know, blue, well, this person must have some uh, affinity for color. And then I also noticed that, you know, yes, there are my favorite marks. Like, for example, there are marks here. This would be considered a mark. It's borderline becoming a shape because it is so large. But, you know, there are little marks like this, and then these would be considered marks, all of the numbers and things like that. So marks are also very important to me. And then lastly, I hope you see that I love shape. Um, the reason why I was able to move forward with this painting was because I realized how, once again, shape really is very meaningful to me. And what I did was I kind of looked at what I already had. I had this shape, teardrop. I had this shape, kind of portion of an arabesque. And I duplicated some of these shapes because it's the repetition that leads to unity. So even if my color weren't unified, one way I can unify the painting or create harmony is to repeat shapes, different sizes, different colors, and kind of worry about the harmony of the color at the very last bit because I can always do a glaze to harmonize. So what I'm going to do right now is another form of glazing which is simply to sand back and I usually really uh, enjoy the process of sanding. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to sand uh, this painting and see where it goes from here. never fun to wear a respirator, but it's really important and um, I'll just explain that the reason I wear a respirator is because I don't want to breathe these really tiny particles that are coming off my painting when I sand. And I was using uh, this sander, but I have a lot of available ones in case the grit of this one is too rough, maybe this one's too smooth. So. At any one time, I have kind of three different grits available, and they're anywhere from like 100 to maybe 150 or even 50. The smaller the number, the more coarse we go. I just have to kind of experiment. This one was actually a 240, so getting a little bit more fine, and this one's even finer. So I actually went for the coarsest one. and. So what I want to explain, I guess, is that sanding is a form of glazing in that the point of glazing is to create harmony, to make sure that maybe things that are different from one another start to share this one thing in common. Well, when you subtract paint, what you're doing is you're revealing the layers that were underneath it. And in that way, it gets back to that discussion of is anything ever wasted? And in a painting, I really don't think so because if one of the processes that you love and are willing to do is to sand back, then what you're sanding back to is the historical layers of your painting, which is what I did here. Now, 
I would just say that when I sanded this back, you know, like now there's a lot of this red showing. And what I might do then is take this gray and accentuate that again. So there's a lot of back and forth when you sand. It, just because you sand doesn't mean it's going to be like the last thing you do on an area. It could be that it's just another step, another stage. So that's kind of how I look at this shape here. I kind of like this because there's some reveal of the red behind it, but there's still a lot of the blue left. And then, you know, this, there's just a tiny bit of green that showed through, so I like that shape. And this one, again, has a tiny bit of this line showing, but for most, most of the green shape is still intact. And if you notice when I sanded, what I loved about the sanding on this one is that these became white again, this became yellow again. So even though I painted red over the yellow, the yellow is again revealed. And so now it's gonna pop forward again. I'm just gonna keep proceeding with this painting, doing what I'm doing, and I'm going to begin that process of uh, less is more. So I'm gonna be very much looking at the entire painting and looking at every mark, every color change, every value change, and saying to myself, do I really need that? If I don't need it, if I hold my hand over it, cover it up, and say, yeah, didn't really change the painting, then I know that I can get rid of it. On the other hand, if I cover something up and say, wow, that's not as good a painting, that tells me I should not get rid of it. And that's just part of what I go through in the final stages. And so that's what I'll be working on as I proceed with this painting. So I hope that was helpful. Thank you.